Virpa is a mobile game specially designed for kids in the age range 6 to 12 years old. Our aim is to teach most of the things that kids will need to know about fire safety and safety in general. We choose for the game the public building kids spend more time in, and that is schools. In the game, the kids will explore a school building. At the same time, they learn all the topics we want to teach about fire safety. And that happens through answering different type of questions and reading different type of information, playing mini games, but also, and very importantly, while finding real fire safety related signs in the real buildings. So actually in the game, in order to proceed, they need to go to a real building and find those signs and take a picture of them so that our algorithm understands that, yeah, that was the right picture to unlock this room and to get inside that space. In Birpa, we combine traditional mobile gaming with machine vision. In other words, in order to progress in the game and to open all those secret rooms and find out all those items that we have located in the schools, the kids will need to go to real buildings and scan with their mobile phones the real fire safety related signs and take pictures of also fire extinguishers or alarm buttons. This way, they connect the virtual and the real worlds and the learning happens better. Also, this repetition of having to take many pictures of those signs will encourage uh, that this learning actually uh, occurs. We needed to use deep neural network here because there are so many different kinds of exit signs and extinguisher signs and uh, extinguishers. So we were not able to use simple image based uh, recognition that could take exact uh, or slightly different uh, images to recognize the objects. So we needed to make a true neural network that understands what is an extinguisher. And it makes it very reusable. So even if there is no training data about exactly the same extinguisher, the detector will still understand that, okay, this is uh, some sort of extinguisher. Unlike in uh, image classifier, which would simply not show anything. It would not have any kind of detection in there. So in the game, the player needs to find exit signs and other signs and to detect if the player has found those, we need to use neural network to detect the objects in the, in the images that the player took. So to train the network, we take a lot of uh, different images about the objects that we want to detect. And then we progressively make the neural network better and better to understand what each object is. So it really tries to understand what is an extinguisher, for example. And uh, after that, we can inform the game that asked us what kind of object we have in the picture to give the players rewards. So this is a direct link between uh, real world and the game, which is quite cool feature. Two years ago, we ended with another project called Birpa One. That project was also related to fire safety. And again, it was funded by Palo Soyelu Rajasto, a Finnish fund for fire safety, and Turku University of Applied Sciences. We then developed a serious game using virtual reality. And our aim was to verify the suitability of virtual reality to study human behavior under stressful situations. The game was designed to actually gather data related to players' performance months and we didn't tell to the test subjects that there was going to be a fire in the building that they were virtually visiting. Among other things, we discovered that young players, kids, didn't know how to react in case of a fire in a big building, neither how to find the fastest escape route. This is why we decided to continue with this topic and we concentrate now in kids and in teaching. We wanted to create something that the kids are already familiar with. So we choose to create a school building that has three floors and some outdoor areas at the first floor. And each floor has this set of typical classrooms and then some special rooms, such as an arcade room or a library that is actually a maze or a mysterious dark room. So there are lots of hidden secrets and things to find and discover in each level. A uh, lot of our assets actually come from asset packs, so I have tried to follow this simplistic style when creating new assets. And I usually find inspiration from generic objects that could be found in any school building. But then I also like to browse Pinterest or ArtStation or such sites to add something a bit fun and a bit original here and there. Because we want to teach about uh, real fire safety topics, 
the fire safety objects like the extinguishers, the alarms and uh, emergency exit doors and the signs, uh, it's important that they are easy to identify. So even they are a bit stylized, they still strongly resemble those uh, real life objects. And these objects, uh, the signs and the exit doors, and those are placed in the school building as they would be placed in any real life building. We went for low poly style in Virpa for various reasons. One of the obvious reasons is because we are on mobile and we need to save on performance. So low poly is just a great, great way to save on that and still keep things looking good. Another one is because our target audience is quite young. We wanted to go with this uh, light-hearted style, which is easy to adapt and on mobile because the characters will be quite small. We can get all the nice expressions shown clearly. Then um, other factors that we thought about were that, well, these are quite easy and quick to modify. So when we wanted to make some changes, locally is the way to go without having to redo a lot of animations and all of those. The tools that we use for modifications and animations and texturing are mainly Blender and Photoshop. So in Blender, we will have the model uploaded and then we can post them again and animate as we wish and make changes on the meshes as well. So as you see, the polycount is quite small and we have, for instance, ripped off the hair so that we can have quick modification from different character to have the same hair but different body. Photoshop we use for the texturizing, as I already mentioned. Uh, so from the Blender, we export the UV into the Photoshop and then we color the insides as, as we wish. For texturing, we have this one master material. So all our objects are using the same texture and the same material. This makes the production really fast, plus it saves us a lot of performance, since the engine only needs to call the material once instead of hundreds of draw calls. And another thing that we use is uh, baked occlusion culling, which uh, tells the engine not to render any geometry that is not visible for the camera. And this is done by dividing the environment into these smaller occlusion areas with different settings. So, for example, most of the hallways and the classrooms work just fine with quite a generic setup. But then at those places where we have uh, lots of objects or longer render distance, then we need more accuracy. And then it's just testing the game until the right balance of uh, optimal performance is found. Our aim is to share the game with as many kids as possible, and that is why we decided to make a mobile game. However, we know that it's hard to catch the attention of the kids, and especially mobile phones, since they have already so many games. So that is why we decided to make a very cool game with a lot of uh, secret stuff, uh, rooms to unlock, skins to use for your avatar, friends to talk, to make them dance, mini games, and a bunch of other elements to make the game like very fun and entertaining. We know we compete against all other games that kids have in their mobile phones. Therefore, all fire safety related topics had to present in a fun, meaningful way. That is why we created mini games that catch the attention of the kids and somehow helps them to interiorize how important this is to know the way to react and act in a case of fire or other type of emergency situations. It is a fire hazard related game which tries to teach two fundamental facts. Fire is dangerous and as soon as it appears, you need to exit the building. And exit signs will tell you the fastest way to escape. There are three skateboards scattered around the school floors, so players must find them to activate the minigame. The levels are starting from the easiest and ending in the hardest. Player needs to follow the signs to escape from the fiery doom. Player can get points by jumping over ramps or collecting collectives. If player gets enough points in the end, they can unlock awesome rewards. Player also need to watch out for the obstacles and the dead ends, because they will slow player down. There are also boosters that will help the player get faster in the burning building. In the minigame there are exit signs that will show the player the way to escape the burning building. We needed something fun to teach the kids about how to safely extinguish fires. Since we thought that artificial reality is cool, we decided to create a fun AR minigame to give the game more variety.
The mini game is about learning how to use a fire extinguisher to put out fires. The player uses a virtual extinguisher on their phone to extinguish fires in augmented reality. The faster you put out the fire, the more points you will get towards acquiring our stars from the game. Before going into the extinguishing minigame, you need to answer a questionnaire where you order answers in order of priority. This ensures that the player learns about the extinguishers before they start to use it, which was our object in creating this minigame. We chose to implement the minigame with AR since we think it is a cool technology and the game already had some AR elements so it fit in nicely. I used the Unity's AR Foundation as our AR technology for the minigame. We chose it because we did not want to add any more third party assets into the game and I already had some experience using it. We used the plane detecting technology to detect planes in the real world to spawn virtual fires on them. So for the main theme, I went with bright sounds and playful melodies. And I think that indicates that even though you're going to be learning, you can still have a bit of fun. It is a short song since you don't spend that much time on menus, but I still managed to squeeze in uh, quite a bit of variation. For the background music, I took a lot of the same instruments and played around with the same melody. And I think the music syncs up quite nicely with the walk cycle of the player. For the skate minigame music I wanted quite a bit of more of tempo and a sense of urgency. I went with that xylophone lack of instrument. I think it's a great instrument to have in this sort of song because it brings a rhythmic element and it also gives an intense feel to the song. And even if you cannot see the fire behind you with this song you can definitely hear it. Some sounds are from real life, like door sounds, elevator sounds and such, and some are created digitally, like uh, for example when you win or lose the skating minigame, there's a little melody playing indicating win or loss. Not every sound has like a real life equivalent, like obviously a door and elevator will make a sound, but if you skate well, there's not really a sound for that, so I made a little bit of winning and losing theme for those. Main software I used for music was Propeller Head Reason. It's a digital audio workstation which I have been using for about 15 years now. I do most of my work on that nowadays. The sound effects were a mixture of public domain samples and my own recordings, and they were mainly edited together with the Audacity. Classmates, they are here mainly to give you hints on stuff that you can find, collectibles, maybe rooms that you still haven't found, and just being there and saying hi to the player. Then we have this one friend that is closer. You can actually call them. They will act as an info for you. Then we have the firefighters. We have three different firefighters. We have Spyro, Susan, and Sam. Spyro is the trainee. He is in charge of giving the player the basic knowledge on the different subject of the matter. Then there we have Susan. And Susan is in charge of testing the player's knowledge that Spyro has just given them. And after Susan, we have Sam that actually tests the player's attitude towards the topic and how they feel like they have internalized the, the topic and how to use the different items such as extinguishers and how likely they are to use them. When designing the user interface, I tried to make it uh, support and fit the simplistic cartoonish style that the game already has. I actually specialize in 3D, so creating this user interface has been a nice challenge for me. And uh, the biggest challenge definitely has been the mobile screen space. How to get the information that we want to present to fit in this small screen. So in a way that it feels uh, easy enough to read and um, it could even encourage the younger players to get interested and involved in the subject. And uh, right now I'm actually working on the UI and the goal is now to make it uh, more uniform throughout the game. Giving the players the ability to customize their avatar in the game provides many solutions for us. Firstly, studies have shown that allowing players to customize their character improves player engagement and can help players retain information from the game. Vierapa is all about teaching children fire safety and we want to increase the chances that children playing this game Will retain the information we're trying to teach them. Secondly, having clothing items scattered about the world provides a little extra encouragement for a player to explore every room in the game. 
This will help prevent players missing key areas of the game and potentially losing the chance to learn about a specific topic. This exploration will also help players build a better mind map of the layout of the school. Players start the game with the ability to choose between two basic models, Alex and Sam. These models have a couple of default outfits that the player can choose from. The rest of the clothing options have been scattered about the school and the player must find these items before they can wear them. When a player has found a piece of clothing, tapping it will cause a cute little animation to play and then the item will vanish into their inventory. A pop-up notifies them that this has happened. And then when they go back to the character customization screen, they can choose between all these new outfits that they've found. In the end, this uh, project is also a research project. So we collect a ton of anonymous data in the backend system to be able to collect averages and key performance indicators to have some source data for research papers in the future. So as the player base grows, we can get more and more data and information, which could prove very interesting in the in future uh, scientific projects and uh, make some sort of statistics and analysis. Uh, analysis of players' behaviors in our game and also in real world. This is the Virpa2 database backend system at the moment. So we are collecting information about the items that the players are collecting, the scans, what they are doing, and uh, of course the users' information about their nicknames and scores and so forth. And uh, this information can then be used to get research data on what order were the user actions done. For example, what was the order of opening the doors and answering the questions. And of course, we also can collect the minigame scores and uh, positions of those scans, as well as user inventories. And this uh, section also contains the information about the text that are in the game, so we can translate the game on fly when it is already released.